Hello dear students, in today's deliberation, we shall discuss about an underutilized cereal that is sorghum and its products. Sorghum is a warm season annual crop and is considered as the world's fifth most important cereal. It is native to the tropical areas in Africa. The oldest cultivation record dates back to 3000 BC in Egypt. Sorghum is produced through the tropical, semi-tropical and arid regions of the world. It is known by various names in different places in the world. In Western Africa, it is called great millet, kafir corn or guena corn, which represents a connection with the corn or millet. It's called jowar in India, keolian in China and milo in Spain. First, let us throw some light on some important facts about this crop. Sorghum is a summer crop superior to maize and millet due to its ability to tolerate extremely harsh environments with abiotic stress from the factors like salt, drought and heat citruses. Sorghum is mainly cultivated in drier areas especially on shallow and heavy clay soils. The production of sorghum in South Africa varies from 1 lakh ton to 1 lakh 80,000 ton per annum. Globally, it has been considered as an important dietary food of more than 500 million people in 30 countries and a major feed or forage source for animals. When compared to other cereals, sorghum grows rapidly and produces both high quality grains and large quantities of nutritious fodder. In rain fed areas, sorghum is stored as silage and hay in order to meet the livestock requirements in periods of water scarcity during the winter season. Following its cultivation statistics, we will discuss the structure and anatomy of sorghum seed or grain. The ripe seed, that is grain, of sorghum is usually partially enclosed by glooms, which are removed during threshing and or harvesting. The shape of the seed is oval to round, and the color may be red, white, yellow, brown, or shades thereof. If only the pericarp is colored, the seed is usually yellow or red. Pigments in both the pericarp, that is fruit coat, and testa, that is seed coat, result in dark brown or red brown color. The sorghum kernel is composed of three main parts. The outer covering, that is pericarp, the embryo, that is germ, and the storage tissue, that is endosperm. Firstly, we will discuss pericarp. Sorghum kernel is a caryopsis in which the ovary wall dries and adheres strongly to the mature ovule. The pericarp originating from the ovary wall can usually be divided into four parts, apicarp, mesocarp, cross cell layer and tube cell layer. Apicarp is the outermost portion of the kernel and is often divided into the epidermis and hypodermis. The middle portion is the mesocarp. Mesocarp thickness is controlled by the Z gene, where thin is dominant over thick. But a wide range in mesocarp thickness can be observed existing in different plants. Mesocarp thickness is involved in mold resistance. Sorghum with a thin mesocarp in general appear to be more resistant to molds. The innermost layer of the pericarp is the endocarp consisting of cross and tube cell layers. The cross cells are long and narrow with their long axes perpendicular to the long axes of the kernel. The tube cells are wider and up to 200 micrometers long with their long axes parallel to the long axes of the kernel. Just beneath the cross and tube cell layers, some sorghum kernels have a highly pigmented layer called the testa or subcoat. It develops from the inner integument which have a definite cellular structure. Testa thickness varies among sorghum genotypes and within the individual kernels with the thickest part at the crown and the thinnest area over the embryo. The color of the testa can also vary among sorghum lines. Second important part of grain is embryo. 
the embryo or germ is composed of two major parts the embryonic axis and the scutellum the germ cells are modified into transfer cells which function in the moment of moisture microorganisms and solubilized endosperm components embryo plays a major role in water uptake and mold susceptibility of sorghum kernels the scutellum cells contain oil globules protein bodies and only a few starch granules the germ of some sorghum cultivars is more deeply embedded inside the endosperm and is extremely difficult to remove while others protrude from the kernel kernel size shape and details of germ placement inside the kernel affect milling properties water uptake and mold susceptibility as well third important part of sorghum grain is endosperm the sorghum endosperm consists of the eluron layer peripheral corneus and floury portions the eluron cell layer is a single layer of block like rectangular cells located directly beneath the pericarp or below the testa if it is present the eluron cells contain large amounts of minerals water soluble vitamins autolytic enzymes and oil the eluron cells also contain spherical bodies high in protein phytin and minerals peripheral endosperm is ill defined area directly beneath the eluron layer it consists of small blocky cells containing small starch granules this endosperm contains free protein bodies that are embedded in the protein matrix and those that are glued together by the glutenin proteins the corneous endosperm is located beneath the peripheral endosperm and has a continuous interface between the starch and protein the starch protein bond is strong and starch granules often break rather than pull from the protein matrix the floury endosperm area on the other hand has loosely packed endosperm cells small voids occur between the spherical starch granules with little or no matrix protein seen these voids permit the passage of light through the floury endosperm area causing it to look opaque or chalky in appearance after the structure of grain let's talk about the nutritional value of sorghum sorghum grain contains 10 to 13% protein 2 to 3% fat and 70 to 80% carbohydrates compositionally sorghum is very similar to other cereal grains and can be used almost interchangeably with maize therefore its future is very promising towards replacing other grains in feeding programs of dairy cattle and poultry however the potential of this promising crop has not been realized fully because of several drawbacks that have kept its production at lower levels as compared to other cereals the major drawback of sorghum include first the lack of status with the crop being regarded as coarse grain fit for animal feed and being food of the peasant classes second the regard as crop of low food value though it hardly differs from maize and wheat it is regarded as food of low value mainly because of tannins which occur in the seed coat of brown sorghum grains and a large proportion of the protein is prolamine which is an alcohol soluble protein having low digestibility in humans starch digestibility in sorghum is also noted to be lower than maize third reason is the difficulty in processing sorghum is generally classified as waxy and non waxy on basis of the endosperm composition non waxy sorghum starch has approximately 75% amylopectin and 25% amylose it stains deep purple with iodine 
On the other hand, waxy sorghum starch contains nearly 100% myelopectin. It stains reddish brown with iodine. The gross composition of waxy sorghum is nearly identical to that of non-waxy sorghum. However, the starch in waxy sorghums is hydrolyzed more rapidly than that of the non-waxy counterparts. This explains why waxy sorghum do not generally have acceptable food quality. An important aspect of today's topic is the processing and product development from sorghum which necessitates discussing its milling. Generally, sorghum is dehulled prior to use. After dehulling, grains are made into flour by different methods, depending on food dish to be prepared and available resources. The various steps of grain processing include the first step of dehulling. The equipments required for dehulling of the grains include deep mortar and pestle, vinegar, some water, a fairly large container and a flat surface or mat for drying. The method involves putting sorghum into the mortar. The grains are moistened by sprinkling a little quantity of water on them. Damp grains are pounded with the pestle to loosen the bran until dehulling of all grains is complete. The dehulled grains are winnowed using local vinegar. The winnowed dehulled grains are put into a large container and washed with water until clean. The second step is dry milling. Dry processing of sorghum for flour is done in three ways. By using a grinding stone, by pounding with the wooden mortar and pestle, or by using a commercial grinder or mill. In grinding stone method, the dehulled grains are washed and spread on a mat to dry. Portions are taken after drying and ground between the mother stone and top hand stone into a fine powder. The powder, that is flour, is sieved intermittently until all grain particles pass through the sieve. Considerable energy is required to grind the sorghum. In pounding method, the dehulled grains are washed, excess water is drained out, and the washed grains are left to temper for one to three hours without additional water. Soaking softens the grains. When the grains are soft enough, portions are put in the mortar and pounded with the pestle. The pounded grains are sieved at intervals until all are pounded into flour. In commercial milling method, the dehulled grains are washed, drained, and dried by spreading on a mat or mats. Then the dried dehulled grains are dry milled using the machine grinder or mill. The most common models of such mills are the premier grinding mill, which uses electricity, and Amuda grinding mill, which uses a diesel engine. Another very important way of processing is wet milling. Like the floor processing, paste processing from dehulled grains using wet milling is usually achieved by using stone grinding, machine grinding, or milling. Unlike floor processing, however, paste processing goes through two phases, the grinding or milling phase followed by the straining phase. The grinding phase produces a rough paste which contains both starch and chaff, that is pericarp plus bran. While the straining phase produces the smooth paste containing mainly starch and protein, the chaff having been sieved off, dried and then fed to livestock. Now let us discuss the products and uses of sorghum. Sorghum is used in many different applications such as animal feed, biofuel feedstock and increasingly in food systems. Compositionally, sorghum is very similar to other cereals. However, both the starch and protein are less digestible than the other cereals. Different products prepared from sorghum include sorghum augi, which is a free-flowing, thin, 
fermented porridge with a creamy consistency and smooth texture. Light colored ogi is preferred with bland to sour taste. The light color results from the color of the grain used, the most preferred being white or cream, while yellow grains are also used. Ogi is prepared from paste, that is endosperm fractions, developed by wet milling. The ingredients include approximately 2 tablespoons of the wet sorghum paste and 6 cups of water. The paste is mixed to a smooth, thin consistency in 2 tablespoons of water. Then the paste is poured into boiling water with continuous stirring until the paste gelatinizes. The bowl is covered with a lid and cooked for an additional 2 minutes. The thin porridge can be sweetened as desired. It is consumed immediately without storing. Second product is sorghum duo. In northern parts of the Nigerian savanna, where sorghum production is greatest, the thick porridge duo is more extensively consumed than ogi. Duo is usually a molded or shaped solid processed from dry milled, non-fermented whole grain flour. The flour from dehulled or whole sorghum is mixed with water and cooked into a thick, stiff porridge that is eaten with a soup that is sauce composed of vegetables, meat and other items depending upon the availability of the ingredients. The basic formula consists of 4 cups of flour and 9 cups of water. Most of the water is brought to boiling. The remaining cold water is used to make a paste of the flour. Then the paste is added to the boiling water. This prevents the formation of lumps. The mixture is tired vigorously and small amounts of flour are added to prevent lumps from forming. The thick porridge is cooled and consumed immediately. Any leftovers can be stored overnight. Third product is bogob. Bogob is a sorghum porridge of boswana prepared from fermented and non-fermented sorghum meal. Fermented bogob, a soft porridge, is known as ting, while a firm, non-fermented bogob is called mosopwane. Ting is usually eaten in the evening and morning, and mosopwane eaten for lunch. Fourth product is sankati. It's a type of thick porridge made from sorghum and consumed in several parts of South India. It's prepared by cooking coarse flour grits from either dihal grain or whole grain. Sorghum sankati is consumed in Andhra Pradesh, the southern tracts of Karnataka and all over Tamil Nadu. Fifth product is sorghum ugali. The cooked stiff porridge that is prepared from sorghum is commonly known as ugali. For preparation of ugali, a clay pot is used to boil an estimated amount of water. When the water starts boiling, a little flour is sprinkled on the surface of the water and heating is continued. As soon as the water begins boiling again, most of the flour is poured into the pot and allowed to cook for about 2 minutes. After this, one fourth to one half of the hot slurry is removed and kept in a separate container. The remaining boiling water and flour in the pot are vigorously mixed with a wooden stick which has a cylindrical handle and a flat end. Additional slurry or flour is added as required until ugali with the right consistency is obtained. Then the ugali in the pot is allowed to continue cooking on a reduced fire for an additional 45 minutes before being served. Sixth product is injira. Injira is the undisputed national bread of Ethiopians. It normally means a leavened, round, flat bread found in most Ethiopian homes. Sorghum is a highly preferred cereal for preparing injira. The best quality sorghum injira is made 
from the dehulled grain. Injera as a traditional food is normally used every day by the whole family for the three daily meals. Seventh product is Kesra. Kesra is a thin pancake-like leavened bread made from whole sorghum flour. It is the predominant staple diet of most people in the sorghum growing regions of the Sudan. Kisra supplies the main dish in the usual type of Sudanese meal. At its best, it is usually served with stews and other side dishes. Or at the simplest level, it is served with a relish or sauce or even with just water and condiments like salt and chilies. Another product of sorghum is sorghum roti. It's an unleavened bread popularly consumed in India. Sorghum roti is known by various names in different languages of India like chapati in Hindi, bhakri in Marathi, rotla in Gujarat, rote in Telugu, etc. It is eaten at breakfast, lunch and supper and is frequently stored overnight. Rotis are softened with milk or buttermilk before feeding to old people and children. India has also been reported to use sorghum as popped grain. Popped sorghum grains are consumed in several states of India by the poor as well as rich, as a snack food and as a delicacy. Popping is done by putting small quantities of grain in a hot pan kept over a steady fire. The popped grains are removed immediately after they are formed. Popped sorghum is considered to be superior to popped corn as they are tender, have less hull, do not clog the spaces between the teeth and cause less noise when eaten. Besides, the popped sorghum grains have been found to have as much flavor and be as nutritious as popcorn. Popped sorghum grains are used as the preparation of sweet snacks which are commonly sold in the state of Maharashtra in India. In addition, sorghum is used to produce malt, beverages, beer and snacks. The use of sorghum as a livestock feed and other animal products is also common. Livestock feed is the most important market for surplus sorghum as it competes effectively with the other grain products in terms of price and quality. Sorghum is an important component in poultry feed and good progress has been made in the manufacturing of dog food as well as pigeon and ostrich food. This is all about today's deliberation about sorghum and its products. I hope you have understood well. Thank you.